Welcome back everyone, I'm the Bella Gamer, and today we're gonna have a serious conversation while I'm wearing a candy corn shirt. Why? Because, I don't know, it's a shirt I decided to put on today. And normally on Monday I try to do my archetype videos, and I haven't done those in a while because I've been very busy, but I feel like this particular video is very important as far as the remaster. So if you want information on the remaster, please watch the video. So there's a current controversy going on over magic in the new remaster for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Now I'm going to state right now, the remaster is not a new edition. Mechanically speaking, the game is going to operate pretty much the same with just some terminology changes, which isn't that big of a deal and obviously if you're an old hat who has a hard time like remembering the new changes it's going to be really obvious what they are even by context so the only major changes i feel that are like mechanically altering are with the magic system and i think that's kind of why everything is kind of getting tossed in the air but i want to say for everyone if you're new to pathfinder second edition you can access not only the old version of the rules on Archive and Nethys, and they're not going to take that down, but also the new stuff as well. You do not need to buy the re new remaster books if you really don't want to. All the rules are going to be available online for free anyway. So there's not a big price jump when it comes to getting into the remaster. And the remaster is not coming out all at once. It's going to be coming out incrementally. So there's still gonna be some conversion things happening over time. Now, whether this is a good idea or not, I actually don't think it's a great idea. There's a lot of things in the remaster that are changing for some classes that I feel like people would like to have sooner rather than later. But, you know, logistically speaking, I understand why it's coming out the way it is. Regardless, if you just keep playing old Pathfinder 2nd Edition, which old is not even the best way to put it because it's the same game, pretty much, you're fine. There, the, nothing is going to break in your games, personally. The remaster stuff is going to change some of the spells in the game, as well as change some of the monsters and some of the classes. But most classes are being mostly unaffected. Fighters getting like nothing. Most classes are getting pretty much nothing. The only thing that like classes might be getting that's kind of universal are the changes to focus points. And even then, it that's really not anything. Anytime you get something that says it, it's a focus spell, it gives you a focus point up to the max of three. And now you can refocus one point every 10 minutes rather than needing to, you know, buy the feats to get multiple refocus points back because you can only do however much between your last rest and the current one. But let's talk about the magic because that's where a lot of the core changes I feel like mechanically are altering the game. Now, obviously, most of what is happening with the remaster and the whole purpose of the remaster is due to the OGL. And if you're unfamiliar with the OGL, Wizards of the Coast pretty much went on a a dark streak where they were like, all right, so if you use any of our material and you make a certain amount of money, we're entitled to some of that and all your future production is one. And they did a bunch of nonsense. Wizards of the Coast completely dropped the ball. They've since then retracted all those statements. But the fact that they tried was very unsettling, especially for Pathfinder, which originated from D&D 3.5. And a lot of the things that Pathfinder was built upon is something that legally might be a little foggy, whether, you know, Wizards of the Coast could take some of the funds, for instance. So they decided to remove any terminology and move gameplay mechanics around. Mostly it's just terminology, honestly, to make it so that it is legally distinct from D&D &D and there's no other issues. That's where most of the things are. Certain spells and monsters have to be completely rewritten so that they uh, they don't necessarily comply with the OGL and are now with the new Orc license. So, 
That is the reason why the remaster mostly exists, with also the opportunity for Paizo to give some rule changes on some of the things that they were maybe a little too conservative when it came to designing the game. The game is made on very tight meth, and to the point that your average player might not even be able to appreciate how good the math in the game is, and thus it feels very restricting instead. Alchemist is a good example of a class that balance-wise is balanced with the other classes, but it doesn't feel that way to all the players who are playing it because it is so advanced it requires knowledge of pretty much all alchemical items to be good and it was held back somewhat because of these advantages now they're kind of loosening the reins a little bit allowing the classes to probably a little bit be a bit stronger because your average player is not going to be able to take as much advantage of them and it's only a very very small core set of players that are going to be able to take advantage of it and they're just okay with them essentially running rampant with the game because that's just that's just what happens in tabletop and i think that's fine i think that's okay i think if the game is more fun for more people that's only a good thing and only the sweaty excel sheet jocks of, of tabletop are really going to be the ones running rampant with any of the you know, extra wiggle room anyway. So, you know, for most people, that's just not the problem. So we're looking at the spell schools and the cantrips. Some of the cantrips, especially produce flame, which is now being changed to ignition, is getting their spell casting modifier removed from the damage, the cantrip conversation that's currently going on. And a lot of people are upset because their average damage per round is going down with the new changes. Removing that spellcasting modifier essentially removes a flat bonus to damage in exchange for a variable number for damage. So let's look at Ignition, for instance. It's going from a D4 plus modifier to 2D4. So most spellcasters start off with max spellcasting modifier. That means that even though the damage numbers could be the same, they're likely not to be the same by one, one and a half points, I think is what it is. And as you level up, the gap gets bigger and bigger. Not by a substantial amount, but it does feel that way. Now, that is something that is a, a ridiculous conversation. No one's using Produce Flame anyway in the game as a major DPR thing. If you're a spellcaster and you're relying heavily on your cantrips, you're doing it wrong. You're, you're wasting the opportunity to use your spell slots, and they're not even your most damaging spells by like a pretty big margin. Though, it does suck for low-level spellcasters who, you know, are struggling because not only do they have less defenses and less HP, they also just don't do a lot because a lot of their major effects are based on spell slots, and you just don't start with a bunch. So for beginning play, the cantrip conversation is a genuine conversation to be had. Now, I do like Ignition because I, I, you can change the damage to D6s if you're doing melee. I think there are some interesting build opportunities around that. But still, I understand. I understand and I understand that the removing of spell schools as well is just straight up messing with some of the various archetypes and classes in the game. The Fey idling gives you access to illusion and enchantment spells. Well, enchantment is no longer a school. Illusion is, so that one I guess will still work, but enchantment is being removed. So what do you do, you know? And they're not putting necessarily any hard traits on any of these spells anymore. Now it's just, you know, whatever the spell does. And when the wizards are getting whole new schools, but the schools are much more limited because they still get that bonus spell slot, but they can only select from a certain number of spells, not having free reign to use any spells in a certain category anymore. Now, I've watched Mark Seifter's video. I've watched the Rules Lawyer's video. I've done the research, right? I don't like the removing of spell schools in general. I, I think Pathfinder is losing track of what made it good in the first place, which is 
you never needed to ask a question about rules because everything was pretty well defined, or at least for the most part. We'll say like 90%, right? So removing spell schools and putting everything in more generalized categories is making it more difficult. Now, the book or the remaster, you know, thing that was added for Rage of Elements did state that the GM can swap in appropriate spells for your spell school stuff. That puts onus on the GM to make those decisions without offering support from the system. I dislike when games do this because not everyone is completely comfortable running a game where they need to like make decisions on behalf of the system because the rule is too vague. This was a big misstep in my opinion. Now, I've played plenty of games that don't have spell schools. I've got it. I understand. The problem is that Pathfinder has rules around certain spell schools, whether it's Captivator, whether it's the Fey Eidolon, whether it's Magus and whatever spell they use, if it doesn't deal damage, changing the damage from their Arcane Cascade, which is a pretty core feature, I might add. All these things rely on spell schools. Now, they did say that they're going to offer errata around the time of the remaster's release to help fix a lot of these issues. And so I acknowledge that Pathfinder knows what they're doing. I'm obviously not a game designer for Pathfinder, and I am fully confident that they can make this work. But this was a lot of work that was unnecessary, and again, it doesn't matter if they're going to errata these things to make it work and make the mechanics work. It's more of removing spell schools creates a sense of vagueness that didn't exist before. And I think that's pretty indisputable because some effects, even Ronald, when he was reading through the enchantment spells and he found one, he's like, it could go kind of here, it could go kind of there. That's the kind of thing that this created. Now, Mark Seifter made a lot of good points where you had to balance the schools because divination really didn't have that many options. There just wasn't a lot of divination stuff. And when you're putting new spells into the game, you kind of have to keep those things balanced. I understand all that for the most part, but I still don't think it's that big a deal because honestly, if you have just some really good spells in general, it's going to work. And I think that's what the new schools are doing. They're going to offer the ability to select some special spells that are honestly really good and like going outside of that will not be necessary for the characters but you can on the GM's honest to, you know, manipulate the system in a way. So I talked about the spell modifier to cantrips and why this is unfortunate for some players, but let me go a bit deeper into that part of the conversation. Spellcasters have ultimate utility. Whether you build that way or not, it doesn't mean you don't have access to it. That's why Pathfinder is designed the way it is. That's why spellcasters aren't really as good at single target damage, though there are certain build, conversa- er, build combinations that allow you to do pretty like comparable damage. Most players are not going to have that kind of information, and so the idea of the blaster caster really doesn't exist. Now, I will say Psychic is a really good blaster caster, and Kineticists kind of most of their abilities are aoe save base and the only ones that aren't are their basic blasts and i think that that is fine and that works but i think a lot of people are ignoring the part of the conversation of the actual role play yeah these people are arguing about the numbers they're arguing about i'm not able to do as much damage or they they don't let me do as much damage But what they want, what they actually want, is to be able to do the damage with the fantasy that they really want to go for. Having Psychic, having Kineticist be really good blasters is good. But what if you don't want to play a Psychic character? What if you don't want to play a Bender-style character? What if you want to be a pure damage-based kind of wizard? You love the idea of spellbooks of studying magic, you like the fantasy of wizard, and you just wanted to do the thing you wanted to do, which is to blast people 
This is something that I don't think is unreasonable for people who want that kind of experience. They should be allowed to play a blaster caster that is a magic user rather than a psychic or an elemental bender. I think appealing to that fantasy is important. So why are people discounting these people saying just play these other classes? That's not what they want. Now, I'm definitely not someone who's less like, not every class should fill every position. A champion is not a damaging class. It's a defensive class. If you want to play a damaging like champion, just play fighter archetype into magic, yada yada. But magic doesn't work that way. You can't archetype into a blaster caster in the game. And it's just due to balance. It's because casters have so much utility, so much they can do, and they're still really helpful in combat. Like, people think they're not good in combat because they don't do good napkin math damage, right? But that doesn't take into consideration the many, many situations where spellcasters can just up whole group, like, hasting your whole party, increased your whole party's DPS by a significant amount. And people don't talk about that because that's not what feels good to the individual. That's only an, a party aspect. And that's what Pathfinder is, is a party-based game. But I feel like, again, people need to be able to play the fantasy that they're going for. And in this case, it's the Blaster Wizard or the Blaster Magic Caster, Sorcerer or otherwise. So how do you solve this, right? What's the solution? I'm not here to tell P Paizo how to do anything, but Paizo has a really good track record of taking my ideas and doing them without me telling them to do it. It's like they're reading my mind. I came up with Undead Companions literally like months before the Book of the Dead came out that had Undead Companion archetypes, which is really, really interesting. So this is what I would do. Make a new spell list. Make a new class archetype that allows you to select it at level one and then make a new spell list specifically for a Warcaster. Give the Warcaster a spell list that only has attack roll based spells and some defensive spells mixed in, you know, some good defense abjuration type spells, which again, abjuration is being removed as a school. So, you know, they're just going to have to hand pick some and then say, GM, if something looks good, you can put it in as well. Not something I like, but whatever. Make a war caster spell list that only has attack and defense based spells and then give this particular archetype bonuses to damage and special feats that the players can select to empower their spells. For instance, one idea that I had was an empower meta magic that you could do that they had in Pathfinder First Edition, actually, that allows you to take a spell that is no more than I would say like I don't know, no more than three levels lower than half your spell, than three levels lower than your current spell level. So for instance, you couldn't select this until you got fourth level spells, which would be level seven. And it allows you to, as an action, heighten a spell that's four levels lower than your current spell casting level by one spell level. So you heighten it by one, that turns an acid arrow into a second level acid arrow. It gives you efficiency on your spell slots. Because one of the biggest problems in Pathfinder in general is low level attack spells are useless higher game because their damage doesn't scale. The only way they scale is if you use heightened spell slots. So that means that a lot of spellcasters, offensively speaking, have a lot of low level spells that just get converted into utility slots instead as their damage would not be sufficient enough, as a cantrip even does more damage than a first level spell when you get to a certain level. That in mind, Empower would allow you to get more utility out of those slots. And maybe it's two spell levels, right? Maybe you could heighten it by two spell levels, or spell ranks, my bad. Spell ranks, that's what they're using now. I've been doing this a lot, so I have a lot of terminology I need to fix up. Anyway, so... Give efficiency, give damage efficiency to their slots. Give them a lot of options so that they don't need to utilize their cantrips and still do really good damage. 
then cantrips can stay the same and spell slotted spells get a damage bonus plus can be empowered or any other effects that make them better for damage. And because you're using this new spell list, that character will have no more utility than a fighter. Heck, you can even, if you really want to, increase their spell attack rolls when they're using these spells. Give them a, a, a flat bonus to spell attack rolls as they level up to match like a fighter, for instance. Because you can't give item bonus to spell attack, at least currently, and putting those items in would make the game's balance kind of go a little wonky. Give this special class archetype the ability to get a special, you know, circumstance bonus to spell attack rolls, which I don't think currently exists. And bada bing bada boom, you have the fighter version of a magic character who doesn't have any utility, only has offensive and defensive capabilities. It can be slotted onto any class because all it does is give them the Warcaster spell school or spell. Yeah, spell list. There we go. Spell list. And everyone's happy. Everyone can play the style of caster they want. They want to be a blaster druid? Sure. Blaster cleric? Sure. It's completely fine. It all works out. Everyone gets the fantasy they want. And it's solved with a simple class archetype. And you can give it bonuses. And the best part is, because it's a class archetype, it can't be even picked up by anyone who is not intending on playing that playstyle because they need to select it at level one. So any non-spellcaster can't select this as an extra archetype, and the spellcasters that might want to keep their utility can't just select from it either. They have to pick and choose whether they want to be utility or a warcaster. This is how I would solve the problem. This would solve a lot of people's problem, allow the game to have spell blaster casters like everyone wants, and to have that fantasy for their style of character. Imagine playing a reverend style, you know, cleric who burns enemies with literal hellfire. I think that's very interesting, and I think that's something that can be really done easily with this unique archetype. I know this video has kind of gone on a little bit longer than I would like. There's not a lot I could have done to make this a little bit more succinct. I've stated the problems, I've given an answer, but I also want to make sure that here at the end, I mention again. People want the game to support their playstyle. That's reasonable. These people who are upset about damage might seem just like number crunchers who want to win the game, but a lot of them just want their playstyle to be affirmed by Paizo. And that just doesn't exist in the game currently. I feel that's pretty bad, honestly, that that playstyle does not exist in the game. Whatever you think about other parts of the remaster, whether whatever you feel about the spell schools or whatever, I'll say trust Paizo. They know what they're doing. They're going to make everything work. All the classes and all the incompatibilities currently will be fixed probably real close to when the remaster comes out. And the remaster isn't going to make you change the whole game. Not a lot mechanically is really changing besides those slight incompatibilities that I mentioned before. You can do old Pathfinder still, regardless. Everyone needs to understand that there is common ground here. That we understand that people want to play blaster casters. And we're not, they're not talking about, and many times I've seen in comments, they're not talking about, let me blast while also having utility. Many times, uh, in my Mr. Rex video, actually, Mr. Rex said, Give me the option where I have limited capabilities, but do better in melee as a work work priest, right? People are asking for that. They're asking for restrictions to allow them to play the game. There's plenty of people who want to play the shifter style of druid, but they don't match marshals and they just feel like they're falling a bit behind when it comes to martial combat. And they just want to be a bear and maul someone, right? And I think they should have that fantasy and they do need to have special archetypes that can adjust their spell lists to allow them to do so. I think it'd be very easy and adding these to the game would not be that substantial. All they have to do is just create unique archetype lists, unique spell lists for special archetypes. 
They've already done it for Elementalist, so why not for Warcasters? Anyway, that's my take on the current con controversy around the remaster and the cantrip nonsense and spell school stuff. I'm more than happy to talk about any of this in the comments, or better yet, on my Discord linked in the description, where it's a lot easier for me to see when the comments are coming in, so I can address them in a more timely fashion. Speaking of all my, you know, stuff, uh, please, if you enjoy my particular take or you just want to hear more of it, subscribe. And like the video. It really helps me out a lot. I hope this reaches out to a good number of people. I hope people can understand that my position is let people enjoy the game the way they want to enjoy and let the let Paizo allow that for them. Let Paizo, who's making the game, support their players in that way. I, I think there's easy solutions and we shouldn't discredit someone because they just don't like the math. They might just be really bad at explaining what they want. Anyway, good luck with your games. Leave the bad luck to me and I'll see you all next time. Bye.